Hello, everyone. Good evening. How are you all doing today? It's the last day in the month of May. How are you all doing today? Let's converse. I want to hear you. So just type it in the chat box how you feel entirely today, okay? So I'd love to know how you are feeling today. 31st May 2024, how are you feeling? All right. Today's the last day in the month, on the fifth month of this year. And how has, you know, generally has 2024 been for you, all right? I don't know where you are joining from, but with time, I'm going to get to know where you are joining from. But first, I want to understand how you feel entirely about the year so far. All right, Femi said, great. Um, Ayurade said, great, fantastic. That means you have people that their year has been really, really amazing so far. Okay, uh, Akimumi said, great. Uh, it's really great that we are going to be saying this night. All right, I want to hear from everyone, okay? So just talk to me before we jump right into what we have for tonight. Just talk to me on generally how you feel about the year so far. Adam said, awesome. Rex said, amazing. Great. I have people that are very, very, um, their year has been so, so amazing. And Cass CMOB said, very well, thank you. Fantastic. So, um. What we are about to do this night is something that is going to be very, very beneficial to everyone. So we are going to be talking on the topic that said cybersecurity projects and skills that will help you land a job in this 2024, right? So what are those projects and skills in respect to cybersecurity that will help you land an amazing job this 2024? But first off, I would also love to know you and where you are joining us from tonight okay so just um in the chat box just type your name and your location of where you are joining us from so that i can know where all the audience that we have tonight they where they are joining us from okay i'm indulging to study abroad can i still attend this scheme i can be fantastic you can still attend this session you should actually be in this session if you are looking to you know move abroad because it's going to be very very beneficial to you Okay, Ayade said that he is in UK. Amazing. So I would love to know where you are and uh, join us from your name and where you are joining us from. King from UK. Amazing. Um, Ogechi said South Africa, Treasure Australia, David uh, Walsall, Femi Nigeria, Kasemobi England, Dixon from Ghana. Amazing. You know, that's one of the beauty of these sessions, right? Because you get to connect with amazing people across the globe, right? Justin from um, United Kingdom, Rex from UK, Grace from Austria, uh, Mokun from Canada, Babatunde from Nigeria, Adedabo from United States. Amazing, amazing. So we have people virtually in Europe, in Canada, in, um, in Africa, everywhere, all right? So it's really, really amazing to have you all on this call, all right? I would also love to know if today is the first time that you are joining us on any of our sessions, okay? So if today is the first time you are joining or just type in a one, or if you've been on this session before now, if you've been on sessions of um, like this before now, you can type in any number, two, three, four, five, as the case may be, all right? So I would love to know if today is the first time that you are joining a session like this so that it will, you know, guide how we discuss tonight. All right, fantastic. I can see a couple of one in the session, in the comment um, box. Famous typed it, King typed for adage market type so i believe that uh, that means that you guys have been on some of our sessions before all right it's amazing to have you guys join us again tonight but if today is the first time you are joining us fantastic welcome to the best place to be right now you know what i always tell people when they join our friday session is that you know what you want for yourself right because basically most fridays what we think about generally as youths is tango this friday all right how do i get to unwind how do i get to relax after a stressful week but you are here in this session so that means a great deal to us and it means that you take your own personal development very very seriously and i promise you stick to the call and you are going to get amazing amazing benefits for being here tonight okay so like i mentioned before now we are going to be talking about cyber security projects and skills that will help you land your job in this 2024 right but i would love to know what you personally want to take out of this session what exactly do you want to learn so that it also guide our own discussion tonight so just type in the chat box possibly 
want to know about cyber security, just put it in the chat box. You want to know how to transition, put it in the chat box. You want to make more money, put it there. I want to see and hear what we all have in our heads, okay? So that it will guide what our external facilitator for tonight is going to be saying and what I will be saying as well, okay? So what do you want to take out of this session? What do you want to know by the time this session ends, okay? So just put it in chat box so that it will also guide what we are going to be discussing tonight, all right? So quickly, let's just do that quickly so that we can instantly start off this session, all right? Casimo, we said advancement, amazing. King said, develop my skill, fantastic, okay? And we're still waiting for others. So please just put in what you want to take out of this session, all right? So that it will guide what we are going to be doing entirely tonight. Okay, Amma said, how to transition to a cyber security role we have to start from and the roadmap. Fantastic. I feel like Amma has fully, you know, drawn a map of everything that we have in our heads. And you are definitely going to get that tonight. Okay. Peter said transition. Mokun said, learn new skill to improve my knowledge on cybersecurity. Ayade said, an engineer trying to transition to tech. Welcome to the family. Okay. So I studied civil engineer first degree, civil engineering first degree. You are welcome, okay? We are going to walk you through how you can be able to make that exact transition. To know more about cybersecurity and develop myself, ethical hacking pro. Amazing, I kill me. I take it that possibly you're already an ethical hacker and you want to become a pro in this exact field. What are the necessary certifications? Oh, I got the fantastic. It's nice to have you on the call. All right, so um, with me tonight, we have an amazing person, Peter that will also be guiding us through everything that we've said that we want to learn, right? So Peter and I, we are going to walk you through all these um, processes from point A to point B. Okay, so just stick to the call and you are going to hear and get everything that you need to know. Hi, Peter, please confirm that you are currently on the call and that you can hear me loud and clear. Hi, Peter, are you there? Thank you, Jupiter Mega, I'm here, I can hear you clearly. All right. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's jump right into it. Who are we, right? So basically, we are Technalytics, and Technalytics is basically an educational technology company that helps Africa and the entire Black community to transition into the tech ecosystem, right? So our services um, range over a couple of courses like data analytics, business analysis, data engineering, data science, financial analytics, HR analytics, Scrum, and of course, cybersecurity. And what has made us so different in the ecosystem these past years is that we help people transition using case study learning processes, right? So what it means is that when you join any of our courses, it's going to be fully a case study-based learning, right? So at any point you are doing any exact topic, maybe you are doing a introduction to cybersecurity, you are looking at case studies, right? And we've, we'll have amazing facilitators coming from places like Microsoft, Sahara Group, Google, come into class to teach our students all these things that they need to know. And of course, our students also grow to work in these amazing places, okay? So basically, this is things that you are going to be getting from us tonight, right? So this is me, I am Chukwe Meka, and basically I'm the COO of Tenalytics, right? And over the years, I've had experience in the governance, risk, and compliance area, as well as uh, management consulting before I became the COO of Tenalytics here. I've personally helped close to 500 people transition into the tech ecosystem and land their first job without any prior tech background. Okay, my experience spans around governance, and compliance in the banking sector. I worked as control in the fintech ecosystem as a data analyst in the fintech, and of course, as a hospitality calls on hands and currently i am in nigeria okay and with me on the call is our amazing facilitator for tonight in the person of peter ode okay peter is an experienced experienced cyber security expert right hi peter i don't know whether you want to send it into the house before i do the honors of introducing you no i think it's fine you go ahead i think it's all fine. Right. You go ahead. all right fantastic yeah. so um like i said earlier Peter is a, an experienced cybersecurity expert with more than a decade experience working as an IT risk analyst, as a penetration tester, digital forensic and fraud investigator, data protection officer and compliance officer. 
He's also a security mentor and a coach that has helped close to five um, 1,000 people without any technical background transition into the cybersecurity space, right? His experience spans in areas of training and development in cybersecurity and IT research, and of course, SOC operation, that's cybersecurity operation. And he is also a CSOC and data protection trainer for over 10 government para startups. He is a member of Cybersecurity Experts Association of Nigeria and also a consultant for the Center for Cyber State Studies. And he's also an expert trainer in the Cyber Space Foundation. So you can go ahead to follow Peter on LinkedIn, Peter Ode on Twitter on, as um, Pew Ode. Okay, so Peter is here tonight to, you know, tell us everything that we need to know regarding the skills and projects that will help us land our first cybersecurity jobs in this ecosystem. But what are we going to be doing tonight? I've seen everything that we've said in the chat box, and thank God it corresponds to everything that we have in our own head, right? So first of all, we're going to be looking at understanding cybersecurity, okay? And then we'll walk you through everything that you need to know regarding cybersecurity, and then we'll walk you through projects and skills that will help you land that your first cybersecurity job. And then we'll talk about the pathway to becoming a cybersecurity expert before we now bring to you about the good news of our upcoming cohort that's starting next weekend, June 8, 2024. And then you also see get to see the success stories we've had in the past, talk about growth internship. And then by virtue of you being on this call, we have an early bird discount, which you are going to be getting. So just stick around and make sure that you listen attentively. So what our advice you to do is just to pick a pen and paper and write down things as we go on, okay? So just take a pen and paper and write things down, all right? We're also going to have a small demo relating to cybersecurity so that you can see what exactly cybersecurity, what they do in this space. So I'll be calling on Peter to come up right now and walk us through everything that we need to know regarding understanding this exact word, cybersecurity. Hi, Peter, the floor is yours. Hi, Peter, are you there? Okay, I think um, Peter had a little bit of technical issue. Okay, um, Peter, I, I don't know whether you had one same person as Daniel O'Day. Hi, Peter, is that you? Yes, that is me, actually. All uh, right. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, the name is actually Peter Ode, but uh, I don't know why, uh, you know, um, um, Zoom is trying to give me Daniel Ode. Actually, that's my Bonner account. So I identify, I am Peter Ode, but I choose to identify as Daniel Ode also, right? So it's great to have us here, and uh, we are all welcome to this session. So um, thank you, Chukum, uh, Chukumeka. I think you have said a lot about you know um, all that we need to know and it is actually a great fit when you want when you decide to delve into cyber security and that is why we want to look at the word uh, you know cyber security and before we look at that we look at the word cyberspace first because your understanding of what cyber security is is dependent on your understanding of what cyber uh, the cyberspace is so if you decide to say that the cyberspace is just within the house that you are living. That is where cybersecurity will come to play, right? So there are actually, you know, a space whereby there is this interaction that happens, right? The interactions that happens between a computer system, uh, you know, our gadgets and all whatnot, right? That communication is being carried out, right? So there's that space. So that space, we refer to it as the cyberspace. And in that space, there are other things that we, you know, look as things that are important. Right, and those things are what we call our assets. Right now, those are the things that determine what your cyber security should be like, right, or what you should understand as cyber security. So, if you decide to say that, okay, my cyber security or my cyber space is just my family members, right, then it means your security will be geared towards your family member. So, if you decide to say your cyber space is the country in which you find yourself, then it will be that your cybersecurity will be channeled towards that country you find yourself. 
And if you decide to say, okay, my cyberspace is in all the countries in the world, now that is the level in which your cybersecurity gets to also. And if you say your cyberspace is the entire universe, now that is the level in which you understand cybersecurity to be. And why I decided to say this is because the job um, you know, opportunities for you as a cybersecurity expert is unlimited. It is only limited based on what you understand the cyberspace to be, right? Based on what you understand the cyberspace to be. And that is why we decided to, you know, drop, you know, uh, give us, want to give us, you know, a, 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 the, 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 the conceptual view of what the cyberspace is. Because actually it was because there's a cyberspace, that is why, you know, there's cybersecurity. So if your cyberspace is limited to your phone, it means when you are learning whatever you're learning or when you'll be learning what we are going to be giving you because it's going to be an all out kind of course that will be, you know, that will really impact on you. I just like um, Chukwemeka said, this is something I've been doing, you know, from the onset uh, of where cybersecurity, you know, came to play, right? I think we started around 2009. That was when it actually came to limelight, right? So and I've been there, you understand? So we really understand what you need and what you need to know. And that is why I am trying to let you understand that. You can go to a particular place and when they are talking about cybersecurity, they will just tell you that, okay, there are five um, you know, uh, job roles for you as a cybersecurity expert, but that is wrong, right? Your level of cybersecurity is determined by how you understand the concept around the cyberspace. It was hard for some people to even discover that, um, you know, Internet of Things is actually, um, you know, component in the cyberspace. It was hard for people to, you know, agree that, okay, robotics is an aspect of the cyberspace. It was hard for people to, you know, understand that IT itself is an aspect of the cyberspace. But by the time you start using, you know, um, cars that, you know, have to communicate using any form of, you know, uh, medium, right? You understand that at that point in time, that car operates in the cyberspace and as such needs security for it. And the security, which are the controls or countermeasures we are putting in place to ensure that these things that are of value, that operate in the cyberspace and they are of value to us, right? That's, you know, security or controls or countermeasures you put in place to safeguard those things is what we actually refer to as cyber security. So we want to lay this foundation so that you understand it and don't limit yourself to, you know, uh, even as an engineer, right? Even as a civil engineer, there is a point whereby your operational technologies, right, meets with the information technology, right, which is what we have today as you know, IoT, right? And it operates in the cyberspace because you can still work as a security expert, a civil engineer that is a security expert in operational technology. So you should understand that it cuts across everything that has you know, a value placed on it and allows itself to you know, be communicated with, right? Anything that can be communicated with and has a value placed on itself you have to secure, you have to think of how to secure that, right? And that is where we have the concept of cyber security. So let's see, look at cyber security. Now, what is cyber security? Just like I have told us, those you know, countermeasures, those concepts that you put in place to ensure that your assets, those things that are of value to you, right? Those concepts that you put in place to ensure that nobody tampers with them, right? It's what we refer to as cyber security. Now, forget about all the Google, whatever you have read. Just understand it the way I'm saying it, right? The countermeasures, the control, whether it is a document you have written, whether it is an infrastructure you go and buy and come and put in the house, whether it's your CCTV camera, whatever it is, right? It, 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 it's actually a control that enables you secure a parameter or a perimeter, rather, or an asset. At that point in time, that is cybersecurity in practice, right? So cybersecurity is the practice of protecting systems, network, and data from digital hands. Now, let me also tell you that this definition is limited, right? Like I told us, your knowledge is dependent on what you understand 
a cyberspace to be. And always know that if they're, if they're talking of networks, remember that network is an interconnection, right? Of two or more devices for them to be able to communicate and share resources. So the moment there is that connection, it mustn't be through the internet, understand? The cyberspace is not the internet. And so your cyber security should not be only towards the internet because the moment you start limiting it, you believe that your job rules will be taken. But the moment you expand your concept around the cyberspace, then you think of security mechanisms to put in place. So the moment there's a communication, whether that communication is, you know, NFC, that near frequency communications, right? Near frequency connections, rather, that is being made maybe using your microwaves communicating with, you know, another device or your television itself communicating with its remotes, right? That's near frequency, uh, you know, um, connection, right? Whether it is your radio frequency, which the internet is built on, because our internet is actually built upon the radio frequency. It's just that it is being, you know, the electromagnetic, um, 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 whatever is being increased, the frequency is being increased, right, in it, right? So whether the communication is done using um, uh, um, your RF or your NFCs or your Bluetooth or your infrared or your internet, whatever it is, in a much as it is two or more devices, connecting together to share resources, to communicate and share resources, then you see the cyberspace is formed. And as such, you should be able to come up with a mechanism to you know, prevent people from attacking it or um, disrupting that communication. So um, most times we look at it that the cybersecurity has come to achieve some key terminologies. And those terms, we look at them and call them you know, confidentiality, integrity and availability. We look at it and call it the CIA triad, the CIA triad, right? So this is the first point at which cybersecurity comes to ensure in the cyberspace. And now let us also shock you that you yourself, as a person, as a human, right? You are also part of the cyberspace. So the cyberspace actually comprises of the people, the process, and the technology. So yourself, as a person, you're also part of the cyberspace because all of us here, we are making use of you know, digital devices, phones. We communicate with people using them. Today, we are in this class, and we are communicating. It means you are making use of the cyberspace. So there can be an attack on you. You become an asset automatically in the cyberspace, right? So that being said, um, let us move further to looking at, you know, other things. Now, like I told us, the CIA trial has come to achieve confidentiality, integrity, and uh, availability. Now, what is confidentiality? Confidentiality is to ensure that that information or that communication we are having, we are doing that because we are confident in ourselves. We have that confidence in ourselves that nobody else will listen into that information. So we have that confidence that to ensure that, that our information cannot be leaked, right? We have that confidence that whatever I'm telling you, I am telling you in confidence so that somebody else will not be told. As a matter of fact, what confidentiality helps to achieve is to remove, like we use the Nigerian term, amebo, right? It has come to you know prevent that from happening in the cyberspace so that people will not gossip each other in the cyberspace. So that is what confidentiality is ensuring in the cyberspace. Remember, we are talking about the countermeasures that we are putting in place to achieve you know, cyber security, right? So one of them is confidentiality. It is coming to achieve confidentiality so that information that are being shared, right, will not be tampered with. And how does he achieve this? It achieves this by deploying a concept known as encryption, right? Encryption, unless it's the broader term for that, cryptography, right? So cryptography is, you know, a technique whereby um, you use to hide information, right? So we can hide an information, send it, you know, in an open air, everybody can see the information, but does not know the content of the information, right? So that is cryptography. Until that information gets to the actual person that needs it, that is only the actual person that, you know, can, you know, 
open that message and then read that message. So encryption is the part whereby the person that is sending the message is hiding the message. Why decryption is a part whereby the person that is receiving the message is opening the message, right? So that is to ensure confidentiality. That is to achieve confidentiality. The next thing is integrity, right? And what is integrity? That the information I'm giving to you is actually true and nobody has modified it. Nobody has changed it from what it's, it should be, right? So that is what integrity does. Integrity helps you achieve that, you know, that feature so that your information that you are sending out cannot be tampered with, should not be modified. So that component of the cyberspace or of cybersecurity ensures that information being shared are not tampered with. And how does this, how is this being achieved? It's been achieved by a technique, technology called hashing, right? So we can, we will definitely, uh, you know, look at hashing. Um, maybe we'll look at hashing here and then explain some concept, you know, practically. I think that will be what we're going to be doing, right? To ensure integrity of, you know, the information of a message, right? So hashing is a technique whereby you create a kind of what we call a digest of a particular information. So there are several algorithm mathematical models that are deployed to ensure that, don't worry, you're not going to be studying mathematics, so don't run away, right? It is not for us to be afraid, actually. So hashing, the models have already been developed into programs. So it is just for you to drop in whatever documents you want to hash, and it creates, you know, a, 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 you know, a kind of a digest. A digest is like a set of numbers, right, for you. So that set of numbers, wherever you go, and that information is there, you can always test to see if that information has been modified or not. So that helps us ensure the integrity of a message, right? Then after that, we look at, you know, availability. Availability is to ensure that whoever is supposed to get an information gets that information. Whoever is supposed to get a message gets that message, right? So that is what availability, uh, you know, comes to ensure. And, you know, today attackers, a lot of them, you know, are going about trying to, you know, cause problems, um, you know, causing denial of service attacks so that um, information, you know, meant for, you know, a particular user will not get to them. So an attack against availability is referred to as, is mostly referred to as a denial of, you know, service attacks, right? So these are the basic things that our cybersecurity is ensuring, is trying to achieve. And we look at it and we call it the goals of cybersecurity, right? So also we have what we call myths of cybersecurity, right? The myths of cybersecurity, right? Those things that you know people used to say that is actually not true, though um, you can find a balance around it while you're studying cybersecurity, right? So the myths, the common cybersecurity myths people always have is that um, you have to be a technical person, uh, or you have to you need to have a technical background before you venture into cybersecurity. No, that is totally not true, right? Because we have a lot of things, a lot of you know. Um, field, right? Areas in cybersecurity that there are good money, right? People make good funds from it. You understand that does not need any technical background, right? The understanding of technical concepts is just something you need to, you know, just know. Just like somebody will tell you that, okay, there's mathematics, but it's not that you are actually coming to, you know, start writing mathematics. That is just, I'm using that as an instance. So for those of us that hate mathematics so that we don't run away, right? So that myth is actually a false myth, right? And when they say cybersecurity is only about coding, that is also another myth that is actually a false myth, right? That's actually a myth that is false. Cybersecurity is actually not only about coding. In fact, as a matter of fact, coding is 0.001% of what cybersecurity actually is. And I believe that for the fact that I've explained where cybersecurity is coming from, trying to achieve, you know, secure a secure space, right? You should understand how broad or how big cybersecurity actually is. And to be sincere with you, every field in life, you can find a niche in cybersecurity. That is one thing I can assure you. Think of any field you want to think of. 
you will always find a niche in cyber security because just like we know 80% of the people in the world right use you know digital devices use phones computer systems and all whatnot right so for the fact that you have to make use of those things means you are in cyber you have to think of cyber security because you're actually operating in the cyber space right you watch television right it is also a component in the cyberspace. So it's not just about coding. It's actually a broader aspect. For instance, that we will call cybersecurity evangelists. What does those people do? Those people that are good in marketing. So they can look at all the courses and start, you know, the way they will talk to you about it, you definitely know that, oh, this is something for you, right? So that is a cybersecurity evangelist rule, which I believe most of us here that are businessmen and women, we definitely will want to, you know, venture into that kind of a role. There's another role, GROC, very beautiful role, right? In fact, I always look at it and I call it the managers in cybersecurity because those are the guys that, you know, develop all the policies, you know, all the regulations, all the standards, all the procedures, the step-by-step -step ways of doing things, you know. So if you are good in that, definitely, um, if you are a detailed person, definitely you know that, okay, this is what you are going for. So there are a lot of uh, you know other rules that are in you know the cybersecurity um, you know field, right? Incident responders that just you know when there's an incident, yes, it's just to you know capture. Okay, what has been yet? Use your camera. Those of you that are photographers, you can be good incident responders, right? The moment there's an incident, we see it. It happens in the world on a daily basis, right? You see, they will say eyewitness report, right? Those people are what we call first responders, right? So in incident uh, response, there's there's a technique or there's, there's a group of persons we refer to as first responders, right? So that is also a job role in organizations. People pay heavily for that job role. So there are a lot of them. I can keep mentioning, um, you know, a lot of them, right? Non-technical. So it's not about coding. It is actually coming up with measures, mechanisms, right? To put in place to ensure that your cyberspace is safe, right? Some people also say that certification alone gives you, um, you know, a job. That is also not true. Uh, as I am, for over how many years that I've been into cybersecurity, I've, I've deployed in different countries, right? I've deployed cybersecurity in different countries. As a matter of fact, my core is forensics, digital forensics. So I've established several labs across Africa, across the world, right? And uh, you know, without any certifications, but just the technical know-how, the technical hands-on, right? So the moment you get yourself equipped with hands-on, just like what um, Chukwemeka said, get yourself equipped with the hands-on that we're going to be giving to you, you know that you are actually good to go. We are not saying that all rolling out that certification is not needed, but it is not what you need to face. You need to get your hands on it because most times cyber security is not about talking, it's about doing right? So hands-on, it's what you actually need, right? So, but certifications are good, they are great, right? Because most organizations always demand a request for them. But those certifications does not train you. They don't give you the necessary skill set that you need. They just, you know, channel or focus your training towards the certification parts that you will be given. As a matter of fact, this morning, I had to write the Certified Hacking Forensic Investigator version 10. It's actually they are uh, by today, by the end of today, version 11, version 11 will be coming out by tomorrow. So we start again. So you have to go and pay over, you know, close to $730, you know, to do that. So the moment you say you want to just be facing certification, definitely you will spend your money and you will not get, you know, the practical and technical skill set that you really want, right? And so hands-on is what is key in cybersecurity, especially those of us those of us that want to, you know, go into the technical, hands-on is key. Those of us that want to go into the non-technical, hands-on is also key, right? So it is not certification alone, right? And it's not only for young people. As a matter of fact, um, yesterday in the expert association in Nigeria, one doctor, he actually did, uh, you know, entrepreneurship at, you know, undergraduate, postgraduate, and PhD. But he now pivoted to you know, cyber security, I'm actually his mentor. He actually taught me entrepreneurship in school, right? 
And uh, now he's pivoting to cybersecurity. And now I, I am also mentoring him in cybersecurity. As a matter of fact, he has he is done with his PhD in cybersecurity. So he had to do an MSc and then another PhD in cybersecurity. He's over 60, right? So it's not actually something for young people only, right? Any age. As a matter of fact, I was telling him yesterday that this is going to be one of his best retirement plan. Because even as an elderly person, you can sit in the house and make full cash that you can take care of yourself, right? So it is actually not... Uh, you know, a fuel for only the young, right? It's a fuel for everybody. Everybody operates in the cyberspace, and as such, it is a fuel for everybody, right? So let's also look at, you know, um, cybersecurity teams and domains, right? So we have the blue teams, and we have the red teams, right? The blue teams and the red teams. So I will say that, um, okay, for instance, when I say a domain, Understand that a domain is, you know, a place that you have control over, right? So if you're coming into cybersecurity, you, it is either you are in the, focus, the positive or negative side. Now in cybersecurity, there is nothing like a bad, okay, there is a bad negative, right? Which is what we call, you know, the black hat hackers. That's a bad negative, right? And also there is the bad positive, right? The bad positive who are the gray hat. So there's actually a balance in the domain. But before you, whether you find yourself in the balance sheet, you must either be in the positive or in the negative side, right? So that is why we call it the defensive and the offensive side of cybersecurity. Otherwise known as the defensive, the, red, the blue team, and the offensive, the red team, right? So when you are coming in or when you're starting the course, your mindset or your mentality should be, you know, around which of them am I doing? Although most of our courses, we try to you know, give you a foundational knowledge in, of all that you need to know. Then you know, when you grow into taking a career path, then you can now you know, channel yourself towards whatever you want. For instance, myself, I've always been a red team, right? I've always been in the red team. I think not until, I think 2019, that was when I now switched to a blue teamer, uh, trying to help organizations defend you know, their systems, trying to establish incident um, response lab, uh, security operation centers, digital forensic labs, you know, for different countries, different organizations, right? So at that point in time, I have not, I have not changed, you know, a career path to defense. But offensive, just like maybe you do hacking, you do penetration testing for an organization and you're paid heavily for that, is offensive. You're actually doing an offensive task, right, to get paid because you are permitted to do it. That is a beautiful thing about, you know, this, when I said there's a negative positive, right? That's a beautiful thing about it. You are actually, you know, carrying out an offense, right? But you are being paid for carrying out that offense because you have the permissions to do that, right? So that is the offensive thing. So things like bug bounty, where people try to, you know, find weaknesses in systems and then, Organizations pay them, you know, pay them hugely because I know of guys, people that have been getting up to, you know, hundred thousand dollars, you know, just for finding a particular bug in a system, right? Like, you know, what happened to iOS, you know, some weeks back, right? Whereby the up, if you update, I think, uh, if you update to iOS, uh, you know, seventeen or so, it brings back whatever file you have deleted. Now that was a bug. It was found firstly by somebody, right? And it will be paid heavily for that. Right, so all of these things, bug bounty is can be offensive, but you have the permission to do it and you are paid for it. Penetration testing is offensive. You also have that permission to do that and you are paid for that. Right, um, 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 vulnerability assessments, scanning systems, you know, all of those things are you know offensive, but you also are being paid for that. Right, if somebody can bring you to his organization to test their system physically. And you are being paid for that. You are asked to carry out, you know, just like when you bring a carpenter to come and help you, you know, break the padlock in your house, for instance. It's actually breaking a padlock, which definitely if the person does not have permission, it's saying that you call the person a thief. But the carpenter coming to do that because he has the authority, he will deploy all the skill set that he has to, you know, achieve that, right? So that is actually what, you know, offensive is, right? 
Then defensive, uh, you know, all of us, those of you operating that wants to go into security operation center, cyber security analyst, right? That's the cyber security analyst role, whereby you are analyzing, you know, you know, networks, analyze packets, incidents, and then respond to them or you know, escalate them. You know, SOC analyst, you want to be uh, maybe a cloud security expert. You want to be a DevOps uh, expert. You want to be an endpoint security expert, a network engineer. You know, whatever it is you want to be that, you know, helps improving a system, a digital forensic examiner or expert or investigator. Whichever one you want to do now, that falls under the, you know, the blue team, right? So the blue team are the guys that, you know, are defending, uh, you know, things that happen in the cyberspace. While the red teams are the guys that, you know, carry out, you know, attacks to protect the organization. Now, how can you say somebody is carrying out an attack to protect you? When the person carry out that attack on you and he is successful, you will now discover that, okay, this place, there's a loophole here, and you now block that loophole so that an external person will not go and carry out that same attack, right? So you employ people to carry the attack, to try to attack you, and you pay, the, pay them for that service, and then they help you block that service or that way, the, the way in which you are, you, are being, you are being attacked. And then if somebody that is external wants to carry out that same attack, that person might not succeed. So that is what um, you know penetration testing actually is. So let's look at skills and some projects you know to learn. So we have uh, you know in cyber security there are skills that you need to know, right? Skill sets that you need to have, right? So we had told us that it is not you know purely it is not a technical stuff. It has a technical component, right? So for those of us that wants to go into the technical aspect. You can see the skill sets you need to know. You need to know networking, right? How networking is being done, how systems communicate, how devices interact with themselves. You also need to know how system is being administered, right? So how does the window system, how is the window system being administered? What entails, you know, most of us in our Windows computer system, what we just use them for is just to, you know, watch movies, type, um, you know, documents, print documents, you know, but we don't know that we are not even using up to 0.5% of the capabilities of your Windows machine, right? So system administration, both Windows, Linux, Mac OS, other operating systems, we'll be looking at them uh, for you to have a technical skill set in cybersecurity. Then you also need the knowledge of programming. Now we are looking at the technical aspects or the guys that wants to you know, go into the technical aspect of cybersecurity, right? Now, there's also, there are also the soft skills whereby it has to do with problem solving. So if you are developing a policy for an organization, you are developing a policy for an organization, for instance, you are trying to give them a guide, uh, you are trying to guide them on what to do, right? At that point in time, you are trying to solve, you know, their problem, right? Also, learning how to communicate. When there's an incident, how do you communicate? For instance, there's an incident, you cannot just go to the broadcasting station and start shouting, oh, this incident has occurred, this incident has occurred, no, right? So in cyber security, communication is also very key, and you need to learn that, right? And we also have security fundamentals. So this, the, the, the guys that develop, you know, your GRC guys also find their way around understanding the CIA triad and coming with policies that will ensure the CIA triad, right? policies that will ensure that your systems are being encrypted or your systems are cryptographically sound, right? Come up with policies, standards for organizations to you know, follow, come up with procedures for organizations to follow. When we say GROC, we are talking about governance, risks, and compliance. So those are people that ensure that all your risks are being managed well in the organization, right? And then come up with policies on how to mitigate or reduce or transfer those risk, right? And they ensure that all staffs of the organization, all people coming to the organization, whether they are third, third party vendors, they must you know, comply with some certain rules and regulations of the organization, right? So all of those things are what the GRC you know, guys helps us you know, understand. So the understanding security fundamentals, that having a general knowledge of what you know, security is all about, you can also you know, play a role in um, cyber security, right? So um, we have um, a project, yeah? Okay, so SecureBees 
is a medium-sized company that provides online financial services to its clients. Recently, they have been, you know, experiencing some suspicious network activity, right? Including um, slower network performance and occasional connectivity issues. The IT team suspects that there might be a potential security breach or unauthorized access to their network, right? So the company has hired you as a cybersecurity consultant to investigate the issue, right? So the first uh, thing is to set up or simulate, um, you know, Wireshark, right? Okay, simulate network environment using packet tracer or a virtualization tool like VMware, VirtualBox, capture network traffic using Wireshark and analyze it for, um, you know, any suspicious activities such as, you know, authorized, um, unauthorized um, connections, data leaks, or potential, you know, malware infections, right? Then um, identify the source and destination IP involved in the suspicious activities, as well as the protocols and, you know, posts, uh, pops being used. Document your findings and provide a recommendation. So this is, you know, one of the projects that, you know, as a cyber security expert, you should be able to carry. Actually, we are going to look at that and then, you know, deploy or use some of the tools that we have seen, because there are quite a lot of tools in cybersecurity, right? So if you look at the question, it has told us, you know, to look at, uh, you know, Wireshark, we should also look at virtualization technology, we should also look at packet tracer. So I might just, you know, go ahead, you know, for the want of time to make use of just one tool, I mean, the packet tracer, so that we see how things are done. So packet tracer is just a tool that uh, you know enables us you know set up a network. For instance, my brother that uh, you know an engineer that is an engineer. Sorry that I'm always using him. Actually, um, I just want because he definitely will understand this what I'm talking about. Just like we have the civil card, the Aki card, and all the card that you use to you know draw diagrams. You know for uh, maybe your engineering you know tools or equipment or building, right? So that is how we also have packet tracer. It's a simulation tool, it's a network simulation tool, right? So you can use it to to develop in the organization, right? So that is what it helps us, you know, achieve. Yeah, Peter, I think we lost you there for a while. Okay. Sorry about that. About that then. I, I was actually explaining, you know, packet tracer as a simulation simulation tool. Just like we have our Aki card, our AutoCAD that we're using simulating, you know, buildings, then take it to site and implement. So that is what packet tracer also is used to achieve, right? So you can use it to simulate your network, how you want it to look like. Then you print it out and then take it to your to the field and implement the network. So VMware is also a, a, a software that we use to enable you run multiple operating systems in one computer system. All of these things are things we are going to be learning, you know, as we progress or, or as we subscribe to the course and then start learning, right? So we'll be looking at virtual machines, right? Virtual technology, whereby you have one operating system, but one you have one computer system, but you have, you can install as many as much operating systems that you want to run on them. If I show you my virtual box, I have up over eight operating system on this particular computer system I am sitting on, right? So I can decide to switch to Linux, I can decide to switch to Ubuntu, I can decide to switch to IoT in, in, interfaces, I can decide to switch to, you know, Remnox, whatever it is, security, security onions, back box. So there are a lot of operating systems out there. So virtual machines, right, helps you achieve this. So we have two types of virtual machines, which are the VMware and then the uh, virtual box. We also have Wireshark that also helps you, you know, analyze network packets, right? So we just look at one of those tools also as we progress. Then we also move to look at, you know, another project, a project two is about vulnerability assessments using Kali Linux. So Kali Linux is a type of operating system that, you know, you can use to achieve, you know, a lot of um, 
you know, penetration testing activities or hacking activities. So definitely in the course, we'll be dwelling more on Kali Linux, not on your Windows. Windows is just, you know, for the lazy ones. That is what I always say. Windows is always there for the lazy ones. Then we have, you know, Nmap. Nmap is used to map out your network, to understand what is actually happening in your network. We also have Nexus. We have OpenVAS that is used to test for vulnerability in a system. And then our project three, where we look at, uh, you know, network hardening, right, and security recommendations. Uh, at this point in time, we are supposed to, you know, look at policies. How do you come up with policies? For instance, as a person, you can sit down and say, okay, I want to develop a policy on how I use my handsets, for instance, right? So how do you use your handset that is making you to be always glued to it? You come up with a policy that, okay, I must use my handset only eight hours a day. I must do this. I must do that. I must. So you are trying to draw out a policy for yourself. So these are the things you deploy to, you know, harden a network, right? So um, we'll go ahead and do a simulation where we will use Packet Tracer. I'll just introduce us briefly in five minutes to Packet Tracer. But before we do that, definitely, like we said, there are actually certifications you can actually go out for. You can look at them, you can look them up, but you need, you know, the underground, the basic fundamental knowledge of these things, the hands-on practical, because you cannot just go and pay money that you want to do CEH. CEH is about, you know, $700, and you're paying it, and you don't have the practical hands on, you will definitely fail, right? So um, there are certifications you can always do, but please let us, you know, get our hands on these things and master them before you go for your professional certification. So you permit me to share my screen where I'll go, I'm going to, you know, um, um, carry out, you know, a simulation using Packet Tracer. Please just um, let me, give me a while, let me share my screen, right? So I believe we can now see my screen. I believe everybody can see my screen. So um, yeah. yes, so Packet Tracer, just like I told us, is a simulation tool. What it does is being developed by Cisco, actually. There's Packet Tracer, there's GNS3. Those are the two simulation uh, you know, tools we have as network engineers, or as network security experts that you can use to simulate a network, right? So this, um, uh, like I told us, we have this and we have GNS3, but this is open source. I think, um, you know, to a point, they allow you to use them, you understand, but it's actually paid for also. But the, 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 I think when we start the class, will tell us and show us how to get, you know, the free uh, one that you'll be using for a while, right? But GNS3 does not have that free trial and it's actually paid for, right? So in Packet Tracer, we have almost all that you need to know about your devices. So what Cisco always do is, whenever they develop any new device, they come and add it in the packet tracer. So if you look at my packet tracer, um, definitely I will not want to walk us through all of the menu bar and all those bars that are up here. The important thing is what is below. You can see, you know, we have, you know, different, different uh, palettes here. You can see the first palette is having stuff like this. If you hover my, as I'm hovering my mouse around it, you can see network devices, end devices, components, connections, and all whatnot, right? So the devices that have been manufactured by Cisco, if you go to any organization, definitely you'll see a router, you'll see a switch, you'll see computer systems, you'll see laptops and all those things. Whatever device that has been developed, whether by Cisco or every other, you know, OEMs, right? Um, they have them embedded in this packet tracer. So a simple network will just be for me to, you know, pick a router and drop a router here, then pick, you know, maybe a switch, right? So I'll pick a switch, right? I'll just pick this switch and drop the switch. I can also go and pick, you know, two end devices. I'll pick a desktop and I'll now pick a laptop and then drop them here, right? Now, these are what I've done. These are the router and switch is a network device. Why we all have our end devices, a laptop, our phones, our computer system, desktop, they are all end devices, right? So I can also go ahead and then connect these devices together. So I'm using the router to connect to the switch. So a router is an intelligent device that allows you, you know, to carry out, you know, um, that does routing for us. Right, routing over the internet. So I'm connecting our 
computer systems, you know, to the switch. The switch is actually like an extension box that allows us to, you know, um, connect multiple, you know, end devices because the switch has several ports. So most times when you go to organization, you see those long stuff, those hardwares that are there, most of them are switches. They are actually not routers, right? Most of them are switches. So this is actually how a network can look like in an organization. Uh, you can still go ahead and, you know, power on the router, right? You can go ahead and power on our router. Um, let me remove this palette so that I can, you can see where. So um, we can power on our router at this point. Let me zoom in. So we can power on the router. Okay, so my router is getting on. Um, let's wait a while for it to come on. And when it comes on, you will notice that the red lines we are seeing, the right, these red lines we are seeing on the packet tracer will turn to be green. So the green line indicate that our PCs are actually connected to the switch, right? So a switch doesn't necessarily need to get on. It's just like an extension box. So the moment the extension is plugged to an electric you know, supply, it definitely you know, feeds that supply. It definitely you know, feeds that supply so you can connect whatever you want to connect. So most times when you go to the organization, you see those cables connecting to stuff. What they're actually connecting to are switches. The router can just be a small device sitting you know, somewhere, right? So that is what you know, happens in our networks. Right, we, our router is taking a little more time, but when it comes up, you notice that you know it is actually, um, you know, uh, it will become green. Right. Let me try this. If this can give us or can be faster to get on, so that uh, we look at some basic, um, you know, configuration. Now, just like I explained to us that the router is an intelligent device. Right. So. Intelligent, it says that it is the router that determines the IP addresses that you know our systems in the network gets, right? It is the router that determines that. So the router gives or issues IP addresses to all the devices that are connected to itself, right? So that is what the router helps you achieve. And I've explained the switch. So the router and the switch can be referred to as you know network devices. Right, and if our router is on, you can actually, you know, tell it to assign IP addresses to, um, you know, the devices that are sitting here. For instance, this is our router. You can see we can come here and say, okay, uh, on this gigabyte Ethernet, okay, let's turn this on. That is where we connected our um, cable to. Since our router is on. I've come here and I've turned it on. I've turned a particular port on, right? And you can see it gets on, right? So this is the interface where you have to start setting up, you know, your router and then determine the type of IP addressing your router is going to be giving your devices, right? So um, for the router to be connected, definitely um, we can determine if an IP address has been, you know, assigned to pieces. What are IP addresses? IP addresses are actually those unique numbers that, you know, allow us to interact, you know, with the with 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 devices in the cyberspace. So every device that communicates with each other, you know, have an IP address. So it is an identifier. Right, just like we all have our names, that is how you know our um, our what is it called? Our devices on the internet also have their names, right? So um, that being said, this is just our basic simulations we'll be looking at. When you subscribe for this course, we are going to be you know delving into a lot of things. This is just actually a tip of the iceberg, right? Actually, a tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of tools that will be deploying, you know, to enable you understand what you need to know. And just like I told you, you mustn't necessarily get 
or it mustn't necessarily become technical, right? It mustn't get necessarily be, start drawing networks, just like what I just did, right? It mustn't necessarily start doing that, right? To become a cybersecurity expert. Like I've told you, uh, there are other you know, skill sets that you can also gain. Yeah, for those of us that want to go technical that need the hardcore, definitely there are you know still rooms for us to look at that. So this is packet tracer. You can also you know just look it up and then try to learn about what the packet tracer is all about. So I would like to draw the curtain here while I invite um, Chukwemeka to please um, you know take over from here. Chukwemeka, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Fantastic job. You've done an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Okay. So um, I will take it up from here. Let me share my screen instantly. But while my screen is coming up, if you are still following up, up to this moment, can you please drop a one in the chat box so that we know that you are still following us. Okay. Hi, Adam. If you are there, please, I can't share my screen. Okay, yeah, I think it's coming up right now. Okay, so if you're still following us, please drop a one so that we'll be sure that you are still with us up till this moment. Uh, Peter has done a fantastic job. He has done an amazing job, right? And now we just want to walk us through how we can be able to transition easily. Okay, how can we transition easily? All right, let me bring up my screen again. Fantastic. So my screen is up. I can see a couple of one. That means people are still here. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so moving on, uh, Peter has said everything relating to uh, all the areas that we touched in the beginning. P areas that people said, okay, I want to know how I can transition. I want to know more about cybersecurity. So let's just have a look at the job outlook of cybersecurity and what it's been like over the couple of years, right? So in 2023, after the monetary damage caused by cybercrime as reported by US, um, the, uh, there was an increase of around 21% amounting to 12.5, uh, historic peak of $12.5 billion. And that means that the openings came up, openings relating to 1 million plus by 2023, and as of then, we had only 400,000 trained available cybersecurity experts, right? And as of 2025, cybersecurity jobs report has also propounded that there will also be 3.5 million job openings. Who and who are going to actually fill this role? That's where you and I come in. And like Peter mentioned, there are diverse sectors that relate to cybersecurity. So even if you don't want to be in the actual forefront of being someone that is uh, maybe the pen um, tester or being in the technical aspect of things, there are still areas that relate to the um, blue team that everyone can easily play in. Things like digital forensic analysis, penetration tester, and system network, application pen tester. We may not be able to go through all of them one after the other, but please ensure that you fill the attendance form and so that you will get the recording of this session and also the slide that we are using. All right, so number four, we have things like the SOC analysts, people that work in security operations centers, and they will have the cyber defender, security engineer, and we have the incident responder, like Peter mentioned, we have the security architect, we have the secure software development managers, we have malware analysts, and of course, we have the technical director, the CISO, who is like the, you know, the big man inside um, cyber security. So how exactly can I, can you and I transition into this exact cyber security? Peter has already mentioned first thing that we need to know, which is identify your target role. And good thing here is that everyone on this call already has piqued interest in cyber security. Next thing is to educate yourself and gain practical experience. And that is where analytics come in, right? So we offer premium services that will help you get enough education and practical experience relating to cyber security. And also the number four, four, which is developing employability skills, right? So it's one thing to have the skill and competence. It's another thing for you to be able to um, match your CV so that your CV can go forth before you get to that exact place. We also help you to you know how to develop and match your CV. And of course, the networking skills and mentorship, which you also provide. 
for example, on this call, we are 80, having multiple people from UK, from um, Canada, from Austria, from Africa, from every, everywhere you can take off in the world, right? So what it means is that by virtue of that, you already have 80 different networks across the globe. And that is where it is very, very important for you to scale up as a cybersecurity analyst. Now, Peter has already mentioned everything that we need to know. So our program for cybersecurity runs every Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West African time. And on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. West African time, right? So this is our designated times, right? But once you join the sessions and maybe everyone on the call said, okay, we want to have a session by 4 p.m., this is also possible. And like we have mentioned, cybersecurity is a very, very lucrative area. So in UK, a cybersecurity analyst earns as high as £57,000. In Canada, they earn as high as $140,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, they earn as high as $105,000 US dollars. But here at Analytics, you know, we have curated a curriculum that will make it possible for you to climb from point zero to an expert level. Right. So what it means is that even if you have zero knowledge of cybersecurity, we are going to walk you from that initial stage, starting from foundations of computing, where we're going to teach you things that has to relate to what is CPU, which is on its mouse, what's RAM, what's ROM, to enable you understand those little aspects of um, computer that will not help you to scale up. So after it will now move you to networking, where you also get to learn things that have to do with IP, HTTP, HTTPS, for you to be able to understand all those terminologies, right? So our courses are going to be beginner friendly that even if you have zero knowledge of computer, you can easily transition to become a cybersecurity analyst. Then after we we'll finish these first two initial foundational courses, we'll now move you to introduction to cybersecurity, where we'll tend to walk you through the how cybersecurity actually came about, everything that, ha that happened historically with respect to cybersecurity. Before we now move on to information security principles, that we'll talk about the NDPR if you're in Nigeria, the GDPR if you're in Europe, and the ISO standard, ISO 27001. And from there, we'll move on to talk about offensive and defensive cybersecurity. Before we talk about cryptography basics, which has to do with uh, you know encryptions, right? So we are going to teach you all these things. Remember, like I mentioned, all the key learning areas that we have, they are all practical based. So it means that once you are done training with us, you can comfortably have a portfolio of practicals that you have done, that you can comfortably present to recruiters as your areas of experience. So when you are done with cryptography basics, you move to cyber threats and attack vectors, then you now do things like network security. How do you secure a network? endpoint security, web and application security, how do you secure your web and applications? And then cloud security, these days everything is on cloud. How do you secure that exact cloud? And then incident response and forensics, and of course, cyber security career and certifications. And you are going to learn tools like um, uh, VirtualBox, VMware, Metasploit, Linux, Zap, Nmap, as the case may be. Because these are all tools that you are going to be using as a cybersecurity analyst. So basically, the program lasts for a period of four months. We are going to learn massively in the class for three months, right? So you are going to do all these things that we've said for three months, after which you have a capstone project and then move on to your internship. So we are going to give you also one month to intern with us. We are going to provide with you real life practical case studies for you to work on. So by the end, you are done being baked by analytics. You can comfortably come out as a full fledged cybersecurity analyst. So why exactly should you train with us, right? So basically we we'll have thousands of training institutes outside there, but what has made us to stand out over these couple of four years that we, we have been playing in this industry is that we have helped over 2000 people transition into getting their jobs, right? So we don't just teach people to you know, learn, we teach you based on curated experiences that our facilitators come into class, right? And these are things that recruiters are looking out for 
So once you have that exact skill, you can easily transition to become a full cybersecurity analyst. And we tend to also bring in industry standard facilitators. People like Peter are going to be in class teaching you everything that you need to know. So if you know Peter very well, Peter actually plays on a larger scale and he's actually a renowned cybersecurity expert in cyberspace, right? And these are people that you are going to have in your classes. And our curriculum is also based on real life expectations. So the way the world is advancing, that's how we also you know, keep remodeling our curriculum because you have experts coming from the field to the class. They can easily say, okay, this is what's obtainable outside there at the moment. This is what has left outside there. So we tend to always optimize. And also the training is blended in such a way that it accommodates your own need. So we have live classes every Saturdays and Sundays, and those live classes are also recorded. So what this means is that even if you missed any class, maybe you had work or you had emergency, the classes will always be recorded and uploaded to your Google Classroom. So by the end of the day, you can comfortably watch all those videos again. Or peradventure in class, you didn't follow through easily, you can still go back to that exact video to watch everything that the facilitator has said in the class. And our classes are tailored to help you land your first job. How exactly do we do this, right? That's also because we've modeled what we call the employability services into three levels, right? So aside the skill and competence that we give you, we also provide you CV review sessions because that's what I always tell people. No matter how amazing and competent you are, if your CV can't reflect this, you struggle to learn jobs. So what we do is that because we know of giving you that skill and competence, we we'll also teach you how to modify and scale up your CV to you know, meet up your current level in life. And we we'll also teach you how to match your CV with jobs. For example, it can have knowledge of um, virtual box, but the job advert is saying we need someone that has knowledge of VMware. Right? So these are the same tools, right? but it's just different, different languages. So you have to be able to match your CV to reflect what that exact job is saying. Because if you don't, the applicant tracking system has tendency to sieve out your own CV and say, oh, Chukemika do not have necessary skills for this job. So we teach you how to do all these things so you can comfortably do it on your own and be able to apply to multiple jobs. Because what I've noticed is that people struggle to get jobs these days because we just go to LinkedIn, we click on easy apply, easy apply, easy apply with one exact CV. The tendency of you being called back is very, very slim. But if you bring out time to match your CV to that exact job, which we are going to teach you how to do it, you will see the level of improvement with respect to being called back. And of course, we also have sessions like LinkedIn optimization, where we teach you how to optimize your LinkedIn where recruiters also can reach out to you from. And of course, Upwork optimization, if you want to play in the contractual space where you want to be in Nigeria and work for countries outside there, you can comfortably make use of the Upwork um, review session that we are going to give to you. We also have sessions that talks about how to navigate the job market. So in this exact session, we bring in experts across the globe, recruiters in UK, recruiters in Africa, recruiters in, in Canada, to come to class and teach you, these are the expectations at the moment. These are things that the job market is saying. So they can comfortably you know, place yourself in that exact scenario to be able to land that job. And of course, number five, which is job and interview prep sessions. So what this means is that if you get a job interview, you can comfortably also book an interview prep session with us where we teach you and tell you things that you need to know. How do you use the seat approach and the star approach to answer interview question? Or is it once they ask you, hi, Chukwemeka, can we meet you? You start saying, oh, I'm Chukwemeka, I'm from here, I have 20 children, I'm married to five. Recruiters do not want to know all those things. So they want to be able to hear you answer their question using the relevant approach and framework that is out there. And these are things that we are going to teach you. And also we have the recommendation and reference letter. So what this means is that if you want to move on in life and um, peradventure, your next recruiter said, oh, we want to have reference from the last place that you said you consulted from. Because what we always tell our students to say is that, oh, I consulted for analysis on so, so, and so, right? So by virtue of you training with us, 
you are working on real life case studies. We the only thing that we do is that we codify them so that it will not violate um data protection laws, right? So you can comfortably say that you consulted for analysis on so 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 and so, maybe using packet tracer to set up network for 10 staff that joined an organization, and you can comfortably present a portfolio to um you know reflect this. Once that recruiter reached out to us and say, hi, analytics, did so, so, and so happen? We are always available to provide recommendation and reference for you. And the level two is our weekly mentorship sessions. So we also bring in industry experts into the classroom to mentor the upcoming guys. So some of us struggle to transition into tech ecosystem because we never had mentors, right? But this is a gap that we are also filling to make sure that you have people that are going to handhold you every step of the way. And number eight, which is the on-the-job support. So if you get a job and you are currently struggling to find your fitting, we are also there to help you one month so you can comfortably stand on that exact job. So all these things we have put into place to bring you to number three, which is our promise to you, that one month after training with us, you must get one job interview right so this is an assurance and that's because we've done this for the last close to five years and we've helped more than two thousand people transition and what do we do first we give you the skill we give you the competence we give you the employability skills that you also need and then we push you out into the job market at that exact stage you are already a full-fledged a uh, person you can comfortably walk in there is a cyber space and can communicate and you know easily use your soft skill and we also have sessions where we tell you how you can freelance and fully get remote jobs and earning dollars so make sure you fill this the attendance form so that you will get the slide and you can go through the link and watch these um, sessions that we had in all those places we teach you how to make use of the class door, upwork, well found, indeed, blessing to get jobs. Because what we've also noticed is that sometimes people struggle to get jobs because they do not know where to look, right? So we are going to give you all these multiple sites, also bombard you with enough follow up to track and make sure that you are applying to job. And what we also do is that at a at a point, we will notice that you are applying but you are not getting called back. We are going to have a one-on-one -on -one session with you and look at your CV and portfolio so that we can be able to say, okay, this is where the problem is from. So finally, our next cohort is starting June 8th, right? And by virtue of you being here to this moment, we'll have a 20% discount for you. And what this means is that the course goes for $750, £625, 730 euros, 1,125 Canadian dollars, and 900,000 Naira. But instead of you paying this full amount, we've given you a 20% discount, meaning that you get to pay $600, 500 pounds, 580 euros, 900 Canadian dollar, or 720,000 Naira, right? So I always advise people to take advantage of this discount anytime that they see it. Because the truth is that, just as far back as last two months, this course was selling for just 450,000, right? Last month it was selling for 600 and people kept postponing and price kept increasing. So I always advise people to take advantage of the pricing anytime that they see it so that they will not say, oh, the price has moved. And this discount is only available for the first 30 people to join the cybersecurity program. So once that exact 30 slot is filled, Will revert back to the full amount. If you want to secure your slot, you can easily use also the first payment option, right? And then one month into the classes, you can now make your complete payment. So what this means is that you can make pay $400 to secure your slot, 350 pounds, 400 euros, 600 Canadian dollars and 500,000 Naira to get into class. And then one month into your class, that means by July 8th, you'll now be expected to make the complete instrumental payment of $200, 150 pounds, 180 um, euros, 300 Canadian dollars, and 220,000 naira. How do I start this journey? So my colleague is going to drop the main start link, which is where you are going to start your enrollment journey from. So what it means is that just simply click 
on that main stack link. So I'm going to walk us through how to join that exact um, start of our journey. So click on the main stack link and it's going to take you to our, uh, our um, landing page, right? So once you click it, you get to see the enrollment center for analytics, right? So what do you do at that exact moment? So what you've seen is just the enrollment center. Simply scroll down and you are going to see the cyber security program. Okay, if you scroll down, you will see cyber security. So what you will simply do at that moment is simply click on cyber security. So I've clicked on cyber security and it will bring me to the main stack checkout page. What do I have to do? I can decide to make the full payment of 720,000 or to secure my slot using the 500,000 option. And then one month, I'll make the other um, payments. What, what I have to do at this point is just to click on the reserve a seat um, icon. Once I click on it, I'll now put my name, put my email address, select the country I'm in. I'm currently in Nigeria and then put my phone number. Once I do this, I'll click on proceed, right? Once you click on proceed, you are going to see the checkout option. So at that point, what you simply have to do is to either use your card to make payments or use um, the transfer option. Now, I am getting the NGN option because I am in Nigeria. So if you are in Canada, you are going to get the option of Canadian dollars. If you are in US, you're going to get the option of US dollars. If you are in UK, you're going to get it in pounds and so on and so forth, right? So I can decide to put my card here and click on pay, simple as that. Or I can decide to click on transfer and then Maystack is going to provide me with Paystack Titan account number to make payments to. So I'll simply copy the account, go to my own bank and make that transfer. Once you are done making these payments, the next thing you need to do is to simply go back to that same link that you enter through, go back to that enrollment center and click on um, um, that you want to um, you want to upload your receipts, right? So once you click on it, I'm going to bring up my screen to show that also. Once you've made payments, go back to the enrollment center and click on upload your receipts. And once you've uploaded your receipt, we are going to send the welcome kit to you, right? We are going to send the welcome kit to you once you've uploaded, once you've clicked on the upload receipt, put in your details, and someone from our team will reach out to you. So at this point, I don't know whether we have any questions before we continue, before I show us some of the amazing success stories of people that have been with us in the past, so that we all we know that we are right here to help you transition. So if you have any question at this point, you can use the raise hand icon and I'll ask you to unmute or you can drop it in the, um, you can drop it in the comment section and we are going to pick it up from there. So do we have any question from anyone at this point? If you have any question, you can use the raise hand icon and we are going to ask you to unmute or you can drop your question in the chat box and we are going to pick it up from there. How do I verify if I have signed the attendance form? Okay, if you're not sure, you can try, you can register again, okay? Are we only limited to two instrumental payments? Oluwa Muyewa. All right, amazing question, Oluwa Muyewa. So um, truly, we know that there are circumstances out there that may make it impossible for you to make that um, initial payment. So what we do for you is if you want a different style, right? If you want a different arrangement, you can email finance at 10 analytics. I'm going to drop it in the chat box, 10 analytics, finance at 10 analytics.org and someone from the exact team will reach out. Just um, email them what you want to be done, right? Email and say, okay, I'm Oluwa Muyewa, this is what I want and then they are going to respond to you, okay? Is there no free courses for the less privileged? That's from Moses. Hi, Moses. At the moment, there are no free courses. So what we always do, um, for example, in March, we had International Women's Day Scholarship for 300 women and for 50 men. 
So instead of selling our course as high as that, we slashed it by 50% so that we can help everyone get into this exact tech ecosystem, right? So as a then our courses sold for as low as um, 450. As a last year, this exact course is sold as low as 150, 100,000 and above. We are all in this economic condition and we are seeing how things are unfolding going forward. Okay, what's happening if after course completion and one is yet to be fully qualified? All right, fantastic question, Rex. So what we give you definitely is fully enough for you to be qualified, right? But the problem is that some people do not make that extra effort, right? Because the truth is that we have a class of possibly 50 people, 20 people, and then 15 of them are serious, they come to class, they do their assignments, they do their capstone projects, they attend mentorship session, and there are still people that don't come to class. Now, in the end, the possibility of the other 15 fully grasping and that people that don't come to class not grasping is high, right? But what we also make sure is that we call people that are lacking behind and say, okay, hi, Oluwamuyiwa, hi, where are you having challenges, right? And if you can still can have challenges when we're talking about packet tracer, we are going to have sessions to make sure that you are carried along, right? But where the challenge most time is, um, you not come and say, oh, I did not understand everything you've been saying from the beginning, right? Or I did not understand anything. And this is maybe week seven of the class. And you're saying, oh, from week one, I did not understand anything. We try to discourage that. And what have we done to make sure that everyone is following the class? After classes on Saturdays and Sunday. On Wednesday or Thursday, we have what we call the drop-in sessions, where people come to class just one hour, and then you cannot ask questions in areas that you are not understanding. And it's just like a dialogue class where you come in and say, okay, hi, Peter, you taught us packet tracer last week, but I did not understand anything regarding to that area. This, this, these are my challenges. Peter is going to walk you through that packet tracer again, right? So after class on weekend, we have one hour drop-in session within the week so that Peter will just follow up with you and know, okay, hi guys, what's going on? Are we having any challenge? And that's the exact moments that you are required to come up with that exact challenge that you are having. Okay, I don't know if that answers your question, um, Rex. Okay, do you factor those who work also, King? Yeah, hi King, that is highly why the program is on weekends, right? We don't do any class work during the week. So the program is fully weekend-based, Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and Sundays, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., right? So these things, we have done it to make sure that you are able to attend the classes. And per adventure, if you had extra shifts that you have to do over the weekend, the classes are also recorded to make sure that anything that you miss, you can always go back to the classroom and watch the video, right? So once you're done watching the video, you can come within the week, within the drop-in session and ask your question and also have groups where we can, um, WhatsApp groups where you can always, always ask your facilitator question, okay, I'm trying to do this. I watched the video. I didn't understand this. What someone is going to reach out to you and explain the concept to you. Okay. So I don't know if that, okay. Hi, Lucky, your hand is up. I'm going to ask you to unmute right now. Hi, Lucky, you have the floor. Hi, Lucky, are you there? Hi, Loki, I'm going to ask you to unmute again so that I can ask your question. All right, so I think Loki is, is having challenge. Loki, I've asked you to unmute. You simply have to accept and then you can comfortably speak to All right, Hi. fantastic. Hi, Loki. Uh, it's, well, I think the question has been answered. Is I'm currently at work right now. It's about the payment plan, but since you've sent uh, the email for the finance team, I think I'll just get to contact the finance team because um, I'm, I'm joining you guys from the UK. And it's about the payment plan, so I just wanted to know how that would be. Um, you, basically, you've answered most of the questions, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Thank you so much, Lucky. I'm glad I've, I've done justice to the question that you have. So for people that work, for people that go to work, we always advise, because you have coordinators that will definitely reach out to you, saying, oh, hi, we have class, you're not in class. And they will constantly be on you to say, oh, hi, look, you missed class. Have you watched your video, right? Have you watched the recording of the classes to make sure 
that you followed what happened over the week. Okay. And okay, Rex is asking, after completion of course, can one get a massive discount or free second course? Amazing, Rex. So if you are our students and you're coming back for another course, definitely we have a discount for you, right? You get a discount for your second course. So we've had amazing students that maybe they did data analytics, data engineering, and they came back to say, okay, I want to do cyber security. We offer you discounts to make sure that we recognize the impacts that you are making also in our business. All right. Do we have any questions from anyone so that we can start, you know, rounding up? So this is just a, a glimpse of what we've been doing and the impacts and features that we had in 2023. So we had Tenalytics Helps Africans across four continents land tech jobs. We've had also instances where we organized hackathon in conjunction with Mustard Seeds, where people won amazingly. I will have five Africans win one million naira in data analytics hackathon. So we have constantly been playing this exact space for the last couple of years, and we are here to stay. So I always advise people to take instant advantage of these discounts at any point that they meet it. Because the truth is, tomorrow, the discount may not be there. Right? We've had instances where someone wanted to join in. This is last day in May, and I can assure you by June, there's high tendency that this discount is not going to be here. So always try to make uh, take advantage of it. And that's why we have the first option of option payments and the second option. So you can use the first option to lock down the exact discount. It's just like futures trade. If you are trading futures, crypto, and any of those things, just like you using your current money to purchase a price in future, right? So you bought it right now, and then you join the class. And one month into the classes, you can now make the complete payment. And even if you do not want to start your classes in June, we have the one month deferral period, right? So what this means is that you are making your payment to start in June, but you are deferring your class that you want to start in July. Because we always start new cohorts every new month, right? Every month, we are always having a new cohort that is starting. So our advice is to take advantage of the pricing now. And even if you're not starting in June, you can defer to July to come into the classes. All right. Do you have any questions from anyone? Can I choose to pay in Naira, but I reside in the UK as I have money in Naira? Fantastic. I'm, I'm sure my colleague have already um, responded to that, Rex. I wish there was instruments for the startup package, Gabriel. Okay, Gabriel, if you desire a different arrangement that is not what is standardized for by us, you can email finance at analytics.org with your own desire, and they will get back to you to know whether it's feasible or not. Okay, so if you have any question, please do not hesitate to use the raise hand icon or drop it in the chat box and we are going to take it up from there. So these things always seem impossible, but I can assure you that it is very, very, very possible, right? We've had instances of, for example, someone like Ini Akbabio, Ini joined our session, he had like over, over 10 years experience in the IT ecosystem, right? But this, what he said is that the mentorship and the employability services session these are things that shaped him to become what he is, right? So you can uh, watch the videos by clicking on their links after the class and see what each of them had to say. So he came to class and he went for a job interview for a managerial role, but he was given a CEO role, right? Because the, the recruiter saw what how his CV was packaged and the experience that he was coming with and the confidence, and they asked him, hi, Ini. Do you can you be the CEO? Because they also lack that, that exam moment. So these are things that we always tell people. Someone like Nathaniel, Nathaniel got a job as a BA after completing his own training with us. Same thing with FA. FA got a job as a business analyst um, after completing her own training with us. So we have thousands, lots and lots of success stories from our past students. So please ensure you fill the attendance form so that you can get all these things. So um, the guy on the right hand side, he got a job as a fraud analyst in UK, uh, where he helps to prevent credit card fraud, and that's after he completed his own sessions. And what he had to say is that our mentorship and interview prep helped him Oluwatosin to get a job. And for someone like also Tony, Tony landed a job with NHS, 
Olube Mumi also landed a job in Canada with Land Depot, and so on and so forth. So we have amazing people. Then someone like Abigail moved from being a care worker to becoming a business analyst in Canada, working with one of the renowned um, companies over there. So I'm going to play the video of Ikmat so that we hear what Ikmat had to say relating to our program. So I'm going to play the video of Ikmat right now. It's coming up, so please stay on the call while I bring up what Ikmat had to say. How to get the most of Grammarly free. It's Kayla on behalf of Grammarly to tell you all Hi everyone, my name is Ikmat and um, I was with the match cohort in Tenalytics and joining Tenalytics has been the best decision so far. You know, for me, someone coming from a background of full housewife because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years and then wanting to break into something new, wanting to go back into work, into the workforce, you know, wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities, so it was a lot. And then I'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me, better opportunities. And then I'm glad I took it. And then <clears throat> uh, also the advice of do not sell yourself short, that if he is always the, it is very, very valid because Place yourself right, you know, don't sell yourself short. It's a very, very, very valid advice. You know, internalytics, they will hold your hands like a child, you know, through through the models. You have to you have the opportunity to go back and study. You have the opportunity to go back and practice. You have the opportunity to ask questions. You know, we have people you can always go back to even outside of class, class hours. It's it's the most amazing experience so far, really. And then Another thing is the interview prep, guys. That is another very important thing. I did my interview prep with Mr. Mohammed, and it was the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future. He knew what was going to be asked. And I'm glad that I took, I wrote down all the things he mentioned. I went back to practice. And then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just, they kept on. And then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced. I did an Excel test, I did a math test, and then they were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely, you are going to get some no's, and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The no's will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development, because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews and yes it worked it really worked for me because i got my first job three months into the program my first job but i couldn't take up the job because i was still, there was a student and i was really eligible to do to work 20 hours so i couldn't take up the job three months later i got two jobs with full visa sponsorship and guys all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses i got so yes the no's will come but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best, best, and the best thing that ever happened to me. And then, yes, um, and they are the uh, most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. And that's a very good advantage. So, yes, the analytics for the win. Amazing, fantastic. So, we all, we've heard things that um Ikmat had to say Ikmat transitioned from being a full-time housewife that's how she describes herself because she was at home for four years um taking care of the kids right and after she after she joined our program one month into the classes she got a job but she wasn't able to take it up because of um work hours restrictions in UK and afterwards she, she after three months she got two other jobs that she was able to now determine and say, okay, this is the one I want to go for. Right? So we have amazing people that have gone to get jobs from the classrooms, right? So ensure you fill the attendance form so that you can comfortably go over all these things and see things that our past students how to, you know, um, say about our programs. Okay, 
you that that's cyber security specific to the Internet YouTube channel, Andy. All right, so Andy, our cyber security course started February, right? That's February, and most of them just uh, are not yet done with their classes, right? But we have people like Oluwatosin. So Oluwatosin was able to get a job as a fraud analyst also in UK, all right? So, and the last step, please, I need a one on one discussion with one of you. Are you able to reach out? Please, it's really important. All right, Lola. So, what um, we do is that you can, okay, I think someone has also emailed you what you need to do. Fantastic. So, I sent you the uh, message. Anyone from the United States? Um, okay, we have people that have also gotten jobs in the United States. So, I'm going to go over and know if I added some of them on the slide to see people that are currently in the United States at the moment. But we actually do have people across everywhere working from Tana Lita. We have people in Scotland, we have in the Netherlands, we have people virtually everywhere. Okay, okay, I think, um, okay, Tangerine is not here. I don't think she Abdrashid is here because that's one I can remember off the top of my head. Okay, this is Abdrashid. Abdrashid, Abdrashid resides in Nigeria when he landed a job as a, um, on a full-time role as a, as a data scientist with Child 420 in the US. And that's after he completed his own training with us, okay? So we have people that have, you know, gotten jobs um, almost um, so many places, UK, US, Canada, Scotland, Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and so on and so forth. So, and these are not people that are just getting, um, you know, just any hard jobs, they get jobs with amazing companies, right? So all these things always seem impossible. And that is why we add all these success stories so that you will get to hear from the horse's mouth. So yesterday we had uh, an alumni session where we brought some of these students back to speak to people that want to join sessions. So what they wanted to say, they said it physically to all these students and it wasn't censored. Everyone got things that they needed to know. So what are you still waiting for? What are you still waiting for? to begin your own journey, right? So our achievement, like I mentioned, we've helped over 2,000 people transition from the classroom into getting their first job in tech across UK, US, Canada, Europe, Asia, and of course, Africa. And our student has gone to work in these amazing companies. They have people that work in Coca-Cola, Uber, um, Unilever, PwC, Microsoft, Revolut, Amazon, and of course, KPNG, and so on and so forth. So this is an amazing time for you to join this exact class. Okay, so are you ready to get and gain this premium technology skill? Are you ready to transition to become a cyber security? The onus is now on you. Do you want to be able to do hashing? Do you want to be able to do use packet tracer to analyze network? Do you want to use Wireshark? It is now on you. Remember, to register, you simply have to go to the main stack link that my co colleagues are dropping in the chat box. Once you click it and you get to the enrollment center, click on the cyber security session and you will instantly navigate the rest and see how you can do it. Or you can scan the barcode on my screen and it's going to take you to the same enrollment center. All right, so we are gradually getting to the end of today's classes. Do we still have a question or do we have any clarification from anyone before we call it a day from here? Any question or clarification from anyone, please, you can raise, use the raise hand icon and I will ask you to unmute or you can type it in in the chat box and I am going to pick it up from there. Okay, I don't think people are speaking. Hi, Peter, do you have any closing words, anything you want to say to our potential students before we call it a day from here? Hi, okay. Duari, that's for the cyber yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess you can hear me clearly. So yes, you I'll can. be expecting to see all of us in class. I, initially, I saw 85 persons in, in the session. So, um, now I'm seeing 44 persons. So I'm expecting to see uh, all of us in class. In fact, we have handled classes that we even have up to, you know, 200 persons before. So, and they all enjoyed it. I think even if you look at us, if you look us up at LinkedIn, you will see some of the testimonies, uh, you know, that we have done, right? 
Um, you can look us up at you know several you know social media um, you know platforms, and you still see some of the testimonies on things we have done. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of us in um, the class as we start, hopefully either next month uh, or by the start of July, or by the start of June or July. So whichever you want to, you know, uh, subscribe for, it's great, right? So hope to see us all. Have a wonderful all right. rest. All right. all right. Thank you so much, Peter. I think someone dropped a question again. How do I register for the cybersecurity class? Hi, Zoom user. So you simply click on the main start link that my colleague has dropped under your, under your comments. Once you click on it, you see the option um, to enroll for the cybersecurity class. So just scroll down and click on the cybersecurity program and just make payments, complete the entire process, and someone from our team will reach out to you with your own welcome packet. All right. So I think we'll be calling it a day here. Most of the statements you see business that are and share with us from cybersecurity alumni. So now, view, like I mentioned before now, no cybersecurity runs for four months, right? So our classes started February. And that's where people are still on, right? February to, uh, I think our last set just finished and they're in their internship stage right now. So they yet to complete their internship. But we also have testimonials about how their classes have been amazing, but not relative to getting jobs at the moment because they are yet to complete their own um, session now. I don't know if that makes sense to you. So what we do every year, because we started cyber security this year, is that we look at the World Economic Forum reports. And after analyzing it, we'll see jobs that are going to be in high demand in the coming years. And then these are jobs that we teach the courses, right? Before now, we don't offer cybersecurity, we don't offer Scrum. But since this year, we started offering these two courses because the World Economic Forum reports have said that the next place, the next big thing in the ecosystem is Scrum Master and cybersecurity. And that's why we added it to the part of the courses that we are having this year. Okay, so most of them are just still in class. They are yet to finish their entire program. Once they are done, the testimonials are going to flood everywhere for us all to see. All right, like I mentioned before now, remember the discount is just for the first 20 people to join this class. So please, the best time to get into tech is yesterday and the next best time is today. So what are you still waiting for? All right, guys, thank you so much for being with us till this exact moment. And I can't wait to see you in class come June 8th. Remember, the best time to get into the tech is now. Cheers, guys, and bye for now. See you in class.